All right, Lake Union Youth. We are here with the presenter who just presented on the stage, Marco Morales. We're so excited to have you, Marco. Thank you for hanging out with me as I ask you a couple questions. Thank here. you. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Okay, my friend. So your ministry is called Bridge the Gap. Correct. Right? We just heard you present on it, but tell us one more time. How did you guys get started with this ministry? So we want to go ahead and make an impact, you know, in people's lives. We want to bridge that gap that we have between the youth and the church and also the community. We wanted to go ahead and bridge that gap, unify, unify the young with the church. Yeah. And keep them in church. Yeah. That's fantastic because a lot of the time, you know, we hear the commentary that young people feel disconnected from their local church, you know? Correct. And so for you to be able to see that need and come in and say, hey, you know what? We're gonna fill in that space and give you essentially a purpose and keep you right here in our communities. I think that's huge. <laughs> that's huge. So thank you for doing that. Um, I did hear you just a second ago talk a little bit about global youth day. I'm gonna ask you two questions, okay? Correct. So number one, for those viewers who might not know what global youth day is, tell us a little bit about that and then what are some ways that maybe we can get into some local projects through maybe Bridge the Gap right here in Illinois? So Global Youth Day consists of, you know, spending, being the sermon, yeah. being the actual sermon on Sabbath, going out there and do outreach, help people, share the love of Jesus Christ. You know, we want to go ahead and spend that Sabbath being the sermon, yeah. going out there and spread the love. Yeah. And this year, what we plan to do is we want to go ahead and make a big impact in, in the city of Chicago, That's right. you know, in the surrounding suburbs. So we want to go ahead and there's a crisis right now going on with a lot of migrants who are coming into the city. Mm -hmm. And they're, they need, they're in the need of clothes, food. I mean, just things that they're so essential that sometimes... Basic needs. Ba yeah, basic yeah. needs that sometimes, you know, we take for granted. You know, uh, last, about two weeks ago, we saw a young girl, she was probably no more than three or four years old, walking around without a jacket. Mercy. I mean, that, that, that is heartbreaking. Especially in this weather. Correct. Yeah. That is heartbreaking because you're like, wait, maybe I might have a blanket or something that she can utilize. Yeah. And, you know, we want to go ahead and serve that community. You know, I mean, Jesus itself was a migrant. That's right. That's right. I love that. I love that. So when we think towards Global Youth Day, if I'm a youth in my local church, right, what are some practical ways that I can bridge that gap? Some practical ways that I can serve both my local church and the surrounding community. Um, if maybe I'm thinking about doing something like that. Correct. A, a, a nice thing to do is actually go ahead and, you know, gather as much people as possible and just pass out hot chocolate. Mm. Pass out hot chocolate with, you know, a little book of the Bible with something, you know, even just writing a sticker and put it in the cup and say Jesus loves you mm. you know that that can go a long way yeah that simple thing to do that you can do goes a long way I love it I love it something very simple very easy to correct do. doesn't necessarily cost a whole lot of money to do it either that's right but it, the impact that it has is incredible correct I love that I love that <laughs> well let me ask you another question Marcos what through the Bridge of the Gap Ministries what has been the most impactful uh, situation that you found yourself in as you've served in the communities what's a story or an experience that comes to mind that stands out in your mind as you've been in this particular ministry you know what we've been blessed to be honest with you yeah. I mean I can go hours and hours just tell you about experiences but we one only have a few minutes so <laughs> you just you know <laughs> but one that has really captured my attention was this one person in particular I can't name their, their name it's okay but you know what I feel like the group has made such a huge impact in his life that it's just, I mean, every time that I talk about it, I feel so emotional mm. because we saw him coming to the group and not speaking a word, not saying anything to us. And then all of a sudden has developed himself so much within the group and the church, you know, seeing young adults working with older people, mm. you know, bridging that gap that the church has. Now we have the young, the little ones, and the older yeah. working together. Yeah. That unification is only coming from God. That's right. That's right. Man, I love that. That's powerful. That's powerful. Well, let me ask you one more question here. It's the 2024 Youth Evangelism Congress. We're right here in the North Brick area. What are you hoping to get right now from this year's Congress? What are you hoping to get? What are you hoping to experience? Well, I'm hoping to motivate more people. Yeah. You know, we really need to go out there 
and share the love of Jesus Christ. You know, through so many ways, and we got to fill that gap. You know, we got to go out there and, and build bridges, not walls. Yeah, that's huge. So if somebody wants to get involved with Bridge the Gap Ministries, Yes. what's the best way to do that? You can uh, look us up on social media, or you can also um, contact me directly. My, my number, I can give my number away. It's uh, um, 708-800-3787, 708 708- Eight zero zero three seven eight seven. We will be accepting donations, um, if possible. You know, uh, we can bring in anybody can donate clothes, um, cups, um, winter essentials. You know, because we're looking to make an impact, a huge impact, and involve other churches. You know, not just not just our local members, but also, like I mentioned to you before, you know, thank God that you know we were exposed on national TV. And, you know, people reached out to us. Mm -hmm. You know, there was people from different churches, you know, people who didn't speak English necessarily, didn't Mm. speak Spanish. You know, that was such a huge impact that, you know, it was it was beautiful because now you have all these churches that don't speak the same language Mm -hmm. unifying. Yeah. To make an impact. That's huge. That's huge. I think that's in the day and age that we're living in. I think a lot of the times people look at ministry and they say, well, I don't speak the language or I haven't been to church in a long time or I haven't done this or X, Y, and Z, right? And there's always a reason why we can't. Correct. Right? But what you're doing is telling them, hey. Amen. Praise God. If you were created (laughs) by the Most High, then you have a purpose and we can help you step into something that wins souls for the kingdom. I love that. I love that. Now, I know I told you that was the last question, but I have another one, okay? Um, if you could give any advice to the young people that are in this room right now about how they can go ahead and present some projects to get some funding to go into their communities and bless people on behalf of the kingdom, what advice would you give them? Think outside the box. Think outside the box. There you go. Okay. I like that. I like that practically, though. Tell me what that means. What, well, what would that look like for them? I'll tell you one. Uh, um, we experienced something very nice. We, we were passing out uh, um, water in the heat. It was super hot. Mercy. And w- there was a lot of traffic, and we couldn't stop the traffic. So I, I always, I, I had a, a dinosaur suit, you know, in, in my car. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I, I was just driving around with a dinosaur suit. I put it on, and we started stopping traffic. You know, we were passing out the water, and it was such a beautiful thing because now people were stopping for us. We didn't have to stop them. They had to stop for us. Yeah. And it was, we were sharing the love of Jesus Christ. We were passing out uh, books, uh, sentinelas. We were passing out water, uh, chocolate bars. I mean, it was, it was, it was nice. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, Marcos, thank you for chatting with me and answering a couple of questions. We're going to...